SmackDown, Tuesday, November 7, 2017, booked, played out, and now we're going to talk about it. I set the standard barrier real high, didn't I? I set that all up at a very high expectation, knowing that WWE could not meet that expectation. I said that SmackDown has to be great last night in order for me not to get amplified and tear it up. Not only good, no, good wasn't going to be good enough. SmackDown had to be great. But then I saw that main event. AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. Now, a lot of you guys know if you saw yesterday's video, I made an impromptu video giving my thoughts on AJ Styles winning the championship from Jinder last night. And I did that while I was down in New Jersey taking care of some stuff. And I said I wasn't going to be able to watch SmackDown live. In fact, I just watched it early this morning and I am making this video just after I watched it. And the last... The lasting impression of SmackDown was AJ Styles and Jinder Mahal in that match. And that actually gave me fucking goosebumps. So what I was going to do is tear this show up. But now, thanks a lot, main event, you got me feeling all good about what the fuck I just watched. Because that was a main event that you could feel proud of, man. The old school heel and the best wrestler in the world doing what they do best, and you can trash Jinder all you want. But Jinder Mahal went out there and he played his role exactly the way it should have been played. And that is the reason that match and that victory got the reaction it did. It wasn't all just AJ Styles, because we all know he's a phenomenal talent and the best wrestler in the world. But the reason people were booing as loudly as they were for Jinder, the reason that people were on their feet and so excited during the final minutes of that match, and elated and shocked when Jinder lost the championship, it was because Jinder played his role correctly. So for all you people that hated on him, that added fuel to the fire, I hope you finally now see what Jinder Mahal's purpose was all along. The problem is... The payoff should have never been at a taped SmackDown. But they felt the need to do it now. There's rumors going around that Ginger had a slight injury and they didn't want him going in there with Brock Lesnar. But if that's the case, he wouldn't have went out there and had a decent match out there with AJ fucking Styles. Or they would have just made that a squash match, which we thought it was going to be anyway. So I question the legitimacy of this injury. It could be, but I doubt very much he couldn't have went in there with Brock Lesnar and had the same type of outcome in less than five minutes that he was going to have if he wasn't injured. But that is a rumor. That's one reason he might have lost the championship. Another reason, Vince just wanted to throw the UK a bone, right? I believe they were in Manchester. So you wanted to have Manchester have one of those epic moments. But for five months that Jinder Mahal was champion, that was all to lead to Manchester on a taped SmackDown? I would have to question that as well. It should have been at one of your top tier pay-per-views. And I believe AJ Styles would have been a formidable next champion. I said all along he was going to be because Vince McMahon owed AJ Styles. Remember when AJ Styles had to fill in for Raw? And then AJ Styles was there the next day as well, competing alongside Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. And then took play a part in that invasion angle as well when some talents chose not to, like Randy Orton. This was Vince McMahon giving him the IOU. I knew AJ Styles would be the next champion. But on a taped SmackDown for the States, uh, that was really fucking ironic to me that that's... I don't know if it's ironic. It's definitely not shocking to me. Um, it's confusing to me that they would choose at that time. There has to be more to the story, I guess. But last week on SmackDown, they announced Rusev versus AJ Styles. And the very next day, they came out with AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. So something happened where Vince McMahon, something happened in Vince's head and he said, no, it's got to happen in Manchester. We're taking the strap off of Jinder. Because that's what they did. In a span of 24 hours, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins lose their tag team straps 
and Jinder Mahal loses his world heavyweight strap in a span of 24 hours. Is this a case of Vince McMahon saying, I, I fucked up, I admit it, I put together a shitty Survivor Series card and now I'm trying to fix it? Is that what this is? Is this a chance, uh, 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 is this a case of Vince McMahon trying to correct his wrongs but make it an even shittier by putting two heel tag teams together in the Usos and Sheamus and Cesaro when we all wanted to see Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose versus the Usos? A lot of people say at least the main event got upgraded, not the five on five SmackDown Raw elimination match, but the Jinder Mahal versus Brock Lesnar championship match. A lot of people are saying now it's upgraded. AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. Is it though? Is this a case of AJ Styles just going to get fucking squashed by Brock Lesnar? Because with a 11 day build, how much are they going to have in store for AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar? How much time are they really going to give them? How epic do you guys think AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar is going to be? If you gave them the right build a month to two months, I think they could have created something. They could have really invested in it. Not just the fans investing in it, but I think AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar and the company would have been invested in AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. But with 11 days, and you know their focus is on the five-on-five elimination match, what do you guys think AJ Styles and Brock are going to bring to the table, man? They're going to give them five to ten minutes at best and it is going to be anticlimactic. I, I assure you of that. They didn't build up to this the correct way. This is just for paper for Vince McMahon. AJ vs. Brock. That'll sell more subscriptions. And then when it comes time, it's going to be some weird odd schmas that all of us are going to be befuddled by. But I'll go along with it. AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar, I'm down with that shit. I'll see whatever they put together at Survivor Series. But I still feel... It should have been built up. That's too big of a match and it needs too much attention than what it's going to be given. 11 days thrown together. Only one week to actually promote this starting on Raw. Less than that. What am I saying? That'll be six days. Five days when they actually get the SmackDown to really promote AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar. I'm telling you guys, man, this was not... Not a lot of thought was put into this. But that's all the what ifs. That's all the what should have been. UK last night, Manchester got thrown a bone and it was really cool to see. I'll be the first to admit it. As much as I'm not a fan of the booking, as much as I thought this should have been at a pay-per-view, as much as I thought that Jinder Mahal holding the strap for five months and Jinder Mahal not letting Shinsuke Nakamura, they didn't let Shinsuke Nakamura take it from him. They didn't let Randy Orton. They didn't let John Cena. They built up Jinder Mahal, much to the dismay of a lot of WWE universe. All of that was just for a TV taping of SmackDown. I'm not a fan of all that, but seeing Manchester last night and how excited they were and how shocked they were. That not only Jinder dropped the strap, but it was in their country, in Manchester. Seeing the look on their faces, man, how could you not get goosebumps, man? I mean, that's what professional wrestling is all about. So it makes zero sense as far as booking. Absolutely zero. Because you did so many things wrong. It was a tape smackdown. You got no money from that. You're booking AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar with just 11 days, less than one week to actually promote it. And you just squash Jinder Mahal after trying to build him up for five months. If you're going to squash him, you might as well get the big payoff. So, so much was wrong with the booking. But the, the monetary payoff, right? <laughs> Which is little, but it's something still in the business. Manchester looking shocked like they were and having so much fun that whole match. And AJ Styles holding up the strap, which is something we all can agree on is just absolute, no pun intended, Alexa, but it's absolute bliss to see AJ Styles with that strap because he is the best wrestler in the world. I do wish it would have been at a bigger stage. Um, Unfortunately, they didn't give AJ Styles that opportunity, but um, that's Vince McMahon's booking. But it was so cool. The match in itself, 
Fucking A, man. I, I loved it because you guys know I'm a Jinder Mahal fan. And I believe AJ Styles is the best wrestler in the world. So for me, it's like Brock Lesnar and Jinder Mahal would have been for me. I'm loving it. And they both serve their purpose. And you had the, uh, the one of the best parts, Jinder Mahal. This is why I love him as a heel. He plays off of his emotion, which is something you don't see wrestlers do these days. If you don't hand them scripted paper, they don't know what to feel. That's what the NXT Performance Center is teaching these wrestlers. Learn how to get scripted. Learn how to be a robot. Have no emotion. Don't speak from the mind. Don't speak from the heart. So these wrestlers are lost out there. They're showing no emotion, and that's why we can't get invested into these superstars. The reason I love Jinder Mahal, he just speaks from his mind and heart, man. They were chanting last night. Manchester was brutal to Jinder. You're on steroids. Ha <laughs> ha. You're on steroids. And Jinder Mahal, instead of doing what anyone else would have done, make pretend you're not hearing it, let it roll off your shoulder, Jinder Mahal goes, boom. <laughs> he has a smile on his face. So instead of just saying, no, I'm not, he's like, fucking take a look, bitch. I loved it. In other words, call me on steroids all you want. I'm the champion. You're not, bitch. I fucking love that. Jinder Mahal throws up the guns when everyone's chanting, you, you're on steroids. How fucking badass is that? Man, I love Jinder Mahal, dude. And, uh, and by the way, a huge thank you to Jinder Mahal for those last five months. Because nobody else in the universe will because they're too busy hindering Jinder. They're hating on you, my man. Much love, dude. You, you took an opportunity that was given to you. By the company. And you played your heel role the best that it could have been done, man. For an old school fan. The newer fans really hated you. Because for newer fans, it's flip, dive, dive, flip, flip. Hurricanrana, 450. Sorry, AJ. Uh, another flip, another dive. They don't understand old school wrestling. To them, old school wrestling means you suck. Or you can't wrestle. Punches and kicks and suplexes and body slams and playing to the crowd. That's all sucking today. Back in the day in the 80s, guys, the, 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 the heroes that I grew up, the people that I uh, fucking looked up to, that's all they did back then. Until Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels really started thinking outside the box. You didn't see a lot of that shit. Maybe Tito Santana. But you didn't see a lot of that. So for the old school fan, you know, I tried for five months, I tried to get you, the newer fans, to understand where I was coming from. And you just refused to. You just, you know, you just hate gender. Okay, that's your own opinion. But to say he sucks at wrestling, dude, you don't know wrestling then, man. Because I really urge you, you have the network, go check out 80s wrestling. And watch a Jinder Mahal match. And I can tell you a list of 100 superstars at the top of my head. That Jinder Mahal was better than, than the 80s. And I still love those 80s wrestlers. So, if it's not your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, that's cool, man. Everyone has their own opinion in guys that we like and in gals that we like. And superstars that we like and don't like. But, um, but the, the, the hate that Jinder got these last five months uh, just because he was champion and your favorite wasn't. Or he was boring you. Um... That's on you, man. There's a lot of fans like myself that actually appreciate what he did. So for Jinder Mahal, thank you so much, man. You got you rocked. And um, and personally, I'd love to see you as champion in the future, man. And don't forget, guys, this was business. What is it? 1.3 billion people in India. Um, he served his purpose, man. He's about to tour over there in December. That's another reason I'm surprised they took the strap out of, off of him. That's the only reason I'm not taking off the fact that he might be injured. There is a possibility, but still, why would he go out there and have that kind of match with AJ? That was actually a decent, even good match. Um, I don't know. There, there's a lot more to look into. I mean, he's going on this tour of India, and he doesn't have the strap. Or does he get the strap back before India? Who knows with Vince McMahon? But uh, he served his purpose, man. $1.3 billion trying to get those network subscriptions, trying to get people back invested over there in India, a, a huge country. Uh, get them invested. What better way than have a, you know this this champion from India slash Canada? Uh, and, and he served his purpose. So uh, I, I had to take a few minutes to really thank Jinder Mahal, who you guys know if you watch this channel uh, faithfully. You guys know 
one of my favorites. Uh, am I disappointed I won't see Jinder and Brock? Sort of. Those were my two favorites. But let's be honest. Jinder and Brock were not going to put on an epic classic anyway. So I'm not that disappointed. AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar would have really intrigued me had they built it up better. But at least we're anticipating something, right? At least AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, even with 11 days build, only one week by the time we come around to Monday Night Raw, six days, five days for SmackDown, to actually promote it. At least we're going to anticipate it, right? Like, how are they going to match up? Best wrestler in the world versus a beast. The beast in the world. You let them collide, at least we're anticipating. Can't say I'm really intrigued or invested because I, I, WWE has not proven to me that I can become invested and intrigued and they're actually going to hold up their end of the bargain and give me something worthy of being invested and intrigued into. Because when I go in there with high expectations, I end up being deflated. Because WWE gives us some shit show. And that's what I honestly expect AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar to be. Not because of what they can do in the ring together, but because of what WWE is going to give them. Absolutely no time. Stupid, nonsensical, uh, creative booking in the match. What they want them to actually do. And because of that, it's going to be a shit show. So, BC, AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar is a million times better than Jinder and Brock. Hey, I'll go along with that, but don't think it's actually going to be better. You guys might be, after AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar is all said and done, you guys might be saying, fuck, I wish it was Jinder Mahal in, instead of AJ Styles in there because AJ Styles looked like a fucking clown. You know, I don't want to see the best wrestler in the world in there looking like a clown. I also don't want to see the baddest motherfucker in the world, which is what we kind of book Brock Lesnar as. We don't want to see him look like a clown. So how do you do this? Unless you're going to give them a 20 to 30 minute, and that's why Brock would be winded after 15 minutes, no doubt. But Brock Lesnar, don't let him fool you. He can go in that ring. He's a pro wrestler. He just doesn't need to be. He can make all his money going in there, doing a few moves, and getting the fuck out of town. But if you let Brock and AJ Styles go over 20 minutes, fuck yeah. Then I'm invested. I doubt they're going to do that. They have all their chips, all their marbles in this 5-on-5 five -five elimination match. But we'll see, man. Again, I'm just as confused as all of you right now, man. This just happened last night. AJ Styles shocks everybody. Shocks everybody. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Uh, becomes champion, and now he's got to take on Brock. This is going to be a roller coaster ride. And unfortunately, with WWE, it, the ride always ends abruptly on the final drop. Um, but the match, man, goosebumps. The, the ending of that match, everybody in Manchester on their feet. Uh, you had Jinder Mahal deliver one of his, uh, the, the most devastating colossus he does is when he just throws his opponent and drops with them. And that's what he did with AJ Styles, just throws him to the mat, pins him, but AJ Styles is able to put his foot on the rope last second. The crowd at this point is cheering so badass, man, to see everybody on their feet. All start chanting the yes. Booing the shit out of Jinder. That's what I mean. There's a difference between booing somebody like, get the fuck out of here, we don't want to see you, and booing somebody because it's actual heat. The way Jinder gets booed is actual heat. That's what's cool to see. Jason Jordan? It's like, dude, get out of here, man. Seriously. Roman Reigns, unfortunately for you Roman fans, I understand. I'm not, I don't hate the guy. But when Roman Reigns gets booed, it's literally, we don't want to see you. Please leave. But with Jinder, it's not like that, man. They just, they're booing him. I don't like you. I hate you. I really think you can't wrestle, motherfucker. You, you, fuck you, USA. You know what I mean? It's like they really have a beef with the motherfucker. That's what's cool. Uh, it's not just get out of my ring. And, uh, to see the reaction last night, man, that was, that's a monetary payoff is what we call that in the business, right? It's a, it's awesome to see for the night. And then moving forward, we don't know if everything is gonna, you know, if everything, if that was the right decision. And I already went over that, so I'm not gonna rehash it for a 10th time. Um, but it was cool to see. And AJ Styles with a phenomenal forearm top rope. Um, after he did what was almost like a stone cold stunner to Jinder Mahal on the outside. So, so AJ Styles like jumped off the rope to the outside and Jinder Mahal got caught up on the top rope. It was almost like he got stunnered. And then AJ Styles went up for the forearm from the top rope and that was it. Jinder Mahal pinned one, two, three. 
And the best part of this is when AJ Styles was celebrating, SmackDown was about to go off the air. Jinder, you got AJ Styles celebrating in the middle of the ring. Jinder Mahal's on the outside. He's beating the shit out of the Singh brothers. He's turning on them. So he's just immensely pissed. He's turning on the Singh brothers, beating the shit out of them. AJ Styles is in the ring celebrating. Manchester is still shocked. And SmackDown goes off the air. And I'm supposed to be pissed off and delivered an amplified version of the SmackDown review. How could I do that? I still got fucking goosebumps from watching it. I liked it. I liked it. Again, I, I have to say it for the 10th time in the last 20 minutes. Horrible booking. The payoff for everybody. The payoff for building Jinder up for five months and losing the strap should have been much bigger on a, on a pay-per-view, at least. Even if not one of your four big ones. AJ Styles capturing the championship? Much more of an epic moment that should have been at a pay-per-view, even if not the, one of your big four. A pay-per-view. But there should have been a bigger plot line for this. For both things, Jinder losing it and AJ Styles winning it. AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, I'm not so sure this is going to be a badass match. In fact, it could be the opposite, which is going to make us all wish Jinder may have been in there just so it could have been a squash. And we saved AJ Styles for something more epic. So the payoff going forward... I think this was absolutely 100% nonsensical, Ill illogical, and erratic booking. But for the night, for the moment, it was a good time, right? And sometimes I guess that's what you need. But we're seeing too much of it in the span of 24 hours. Tag team championships uh, changed hands, and the world heavyweight championship changed hands. And if you think about it, in, in next week, we're fully anticipating Charlotte to actually get the strap from Natalia. So now it's going to be Charlotte and Alexa Bliss. As much as we would like to see that more than Natalia and Alexa Bliss again, is it going to be done correctly? Or is this just going to be pretty on paper? Half of the card is changing before Survivor Series, and not just before Survivor Series, but one week before Survivor Series. So, what are they building? This is just like, they put it together too fast and then they changed their minds. They had to fit in Roman Reigns, so they took the straps off of the rest of the Shield and now they're just going to have Shield versus New Day. And because of that, Sheamus is, it's like, everything is erratic. Every single Raw and SmackDown, things are, I mean, a lot of fans might say, hey, this is keeping to get interested and this is intriguing me, BC. If it is, that's awesome, guys. That's a lot of the newer fans I'm, I'm suspecting because a lot of the newer fans from 2010 on, shit has been getting erratic with the booking. So this is all you're used to. But for someone who grew up with building storylines, I'm talking guys, not just two months, I'm talking three months, four months. Because back then there was only four pay-per-views. Even before King of the Ring, it was Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series. You had three to four months between each. And you were building a storyline for three to four months. Could you guys imagine that today? Fans would get bored. Sasha Banks, Charlotte tried it. And everyone got bored as shit with that. Jinder Mahal was only champion five months. In his only second month, people were bored and throwing fucking pitchforks at him. Nobody's willing to let anything build these days. So I can see why a lot of fans today are like, this is suspenseful, man. Every day something different and organic can happen. But is that best for business going forward? Is that what should be happening? I beg to differ. But that's what this platform is all about, man. Everyone has their differences and opinions. And we're all from different eras. Some people like me started watching wrestling in the 80s. We're going to have a different outlook. Some watched it in the 90s. They'll have an even different outlook than those in the 80s. Some fans started watching in the 2000s. Unfortunately, some started watching from 2010 on, which you've seen the worst of WWE, but in your minds, it's probably awesome because it's all that you know. So, thank you guys for sticking with me in my opinions because I'm, st I'm trying to learn to really look at it from all angles. And we all start watching wrestling at different points and different things are, are better for us and different things are worse. Um, what I will say, guys, if you're going to listen to my opinion and you weren't watching wrestling in the 80s and 90s, all I can tell you is if you guys let things build, and you, you, I promise you, if you just give it the time, and don't just become bored with it instantly, don't just move on to the next thing, or want to move on to the next thing, or think this person should be champion, because this person was champion for two months, 
If you let things build, you guys, I promise you, will become invested and you will care a lot more when the pay-per-view comes along or when the match finally happens, you guys will become invested. The problem is, even if you guys do that and you allow yourselves to, WWE has so many pay-per-views that they're moving on to the next thing, one after the other. So it's a catch-22. It's almost like WWE, they need to build shit, but they're not giving themselves enough time because it's every month there's a new pay-per-view for each brand. It's a vicious cycle. I don't even know what the remedy would be. I really don't. Is there a remedy? Do we all just sit back and just say, fuck it, it's the era of chaos, right? Embrace the chaos because that's what it is, man. For fans like me, nothing is making sense anymore. It is nonsensical bullshit. You guys know that's the phrase that I call this. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. They announced a whole card for Survivor Series a month ago. And every week they're just changing it. And, and, and in their minds, and maybe a lot of fans, it's like, cool, this is good. Or, hey, this is an improvement from the original. But it's not allowing fans like me to invest, man. It's not allowing me to care. It's not allowing me to give a fuck. Charlotte versus Alexa Bliss, of course that's better than Natalia and Charlotte. Or Natalia and Alexa, I'm sorry. But I'm still not going to give a fuck about it. AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, if given the right time, of course that would be better than Jinder and Brock. That doesn't mean it's going to be better. You'll know what I mean when Survivor Series goes off the air. Trust me, you'll know what I mean. But on paper, sure, we can get giggly about it. I just don't care. But, uh, that's my gripe, guys. But that main event last night, as much as I don't like the booking, as much as I disagree with it, what a moment for AJ Styles. How can you not like a moment where the best wrestler in the world captures the championship? Epic. That's fucking awesome, man. Uh, you know what I mean? AJ Styles is epic. Not calling SmackDown epic, trust me. Because outside of that, you had SmackDown being SmackDown. What? Sami Zayn. Jabber Zayn was back last night, right? BC, great things are happening with him now that he turned heel. Are they? He just lost another match to a guy in a tag team. Xavier Woods. A guy in a fucking tag team just beat Sami Zayn last night. So the Sami Zayn Jobber World Tour continues. BC, give it time. He just turned heel. He'll get big, big shots. Okay, guys. I've been waiting the whole last year plus that you guys have been telling me, wait, wait, wait. He turns heel. And now he's already losing matches to guys in tag teams on random SmackDowns. I'll wait for the good things, guys. Also, Rusev, the Rusev Jobber World Tour, but that's not even Jobber, that's the Burial World Tour. That's the Rusev Burial World Tour. We thought they were going to give him a consolation prize. He was going to take on AJ Styles, and instead, they give him Randy Orton, a guy who's already on the team for SmackDown. So we're like, okay, Rusev definitely has to win this, right? Because Orton gains nothing by winning this match. He's already on the team. They still had Randy Orton, RKO. Rusev is beat, one, two, three. Rusev, <laughs> how do you, it would almost be better if you just didn't mention Rusev and just kept him off the team. You actually had him go out there and lose a qualifier match 12 days before. How do you, poor Rusev, man. I told you, there's no coming back now. You could have Rusev win every single championship on the brand next week, and Rusev is still trying to dig himself out of burial. I'm telling you. And that sucks, man. I'm a Rusev fan. You guys know that. And, uh. It's hard to be a Rusev fan. Uh, most of you guys are not Rusev fans, so let me explain to you how hard it is to be. It is excruciating to be a Rusev fan. Fuck it, hey, man. That poor guy. So you have the Sami Zayn Jobber World Tour continued and the Rusev Burial World Tour continued. Then you had the weirdest tag team match that I'm only okay with because of the ending, but the ending is what made it so fucking strange. Gable and Benjamin versus the Usos. Usos get counted out and Gable and Benjamin win the match. I am so fucking happy that the Usos did not drop the straps last night. But I thought the match itself should have never been made and I thought the match itself actually sucked. And it was a weird ending. I mean, I want the Usos to keep the straps, but 
Just an odd ending. And you guys know the main reason isn't just because I want the Usos deserve those straps right now. It's because Gable and, and Benjamin should not even be a team. Gable should be on his own right now. A singles competitor. Because he showed in those short few weeks that he was wrestling those matches against Rusev even. That Gable has what it takes. He's got the charisma, the personality, the talent. And if you give him the chance, he could have that it factor. We just don't know it yet. But we think it's in there. We have to see more of him in singles. We, I think he's got it. It. But you threw another tag team competitor on him. Shelton Benjamin. For what reason? Gable already held the tag team straps before with somebody. He doesn't need Benjamin by his side. I want them separated. I want Gable to, to go on to, uh, to just epic things, man. Because I think there's bright things in his future. Right now, he's being hindered by Shelton Benjamin. So, weird tag team match there. What was cool last night was they actually let Becky Lynch take on uh, James Ellsworth. And even though it's James Ellsworth, we, we, we think of him as just another female competitor. He is actually a dude in real life, we believe. So they, Vince McMahon actually let Ellsworth like shove Becky Lynch to the ground, to the mat. And then a second time to the outside mat, Becky Lynch just got shoved right outside. That was cool to see because that's something you saw in the Attitude Era. I'm not saying it's right, but I mean, it's entertainment and the payoff is the female beats the male. So everything was right in the world. But for Vince McMahon to allow that, man, they actually went many years back to the Attitude Era because usually Vince does not want a man touching a female in any way. And they actually had Ellsworth go out there and, and take down Becky Lynch on several occasions. Becky Lynch ends up winning the match. And after the match, Carmella was about to take on Becky... Uh, for Ellsworth, because again, Becky Lynch defeated Ellsworth, got him in her arm bar, but uh, Carmella was going to try to save face for Ellsworth, but instead turns to Ellsworth and gives him a super kick. Ellsworth knocked out on the mat, Carmella storms off. Does this mean it's the end of Carmella and Ellsworth? I doubt it. Ellsworth will apologize, even though he's the one who got kicked in the face. He'll apologize, come whimpering back to, to Carmella. Um... But it was cool to see Carmella give a, some sweet chin music to Ellsworth. And it was cool to see Becky Lynch take on Ellsworth and defeat Ellsworth. So that was at least a cool part of the show. Um, what the fuck else, guys? Uh, that, that's it, man. I, I, that's all I'm going to talk about. There was other things, but that was it, man. It, it, was a, a, it was the SmackDown I was expecting. But again, because I just before I watched this video saw that main event... I couldn't come out here and tear it apart because uh, it was a cool moment, at least. Um, bad booking, but it was a cool moment. Um, but let's be honest, WWE can create 20 good moments every single night if they wanted to. That doesn't make the booking right, and that doesn't make the, the, the storylines right. doesn't even create a storyline if you think about it. Um, but at least it was a cool moment, man. So, I, I mean, it, it was a goosebump moment for me. You know, when you see the best wrestler in the world capture that championship... And, uh, man, Jinder Mahal, where does he go from here? You know, a lot of questions. But, uh, that was SmackDown, guys. Uh, next week, they're really promoting the shit out of it. You have a, the, the women's championship match, Charlotte and Natalia, And you have, what else do you have, man? You have the United States championship, like anybody gives a shit. Um, Baron Corbin is taking on, who is it, Sin Cara? And, I don't know, other shit as well. Other bullshit, man. Um, for, for Raw, they have Roman Reigns being promoted as coming back, so the Shield is reunited. You have Brock Lesnar being advertised. So, all the bigwigs will be there on Monday. I just think it was too late, man. They saved the invasion to the last six days. Five days, six days. So, no, for Raw, for Raw to invade, there would only be five days. Tuesday night, so then you would have Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. Five days before Survivor Series, they're gonna do the invasion. Five days, and that's supposed to make us invested. See, now I'm going to get irritated. I made it through this whole thing without getting really amplified. Now I'm going to get really fucking irritated. Because the more I think about this booking, it's... It just... Wow, dude. I I'm not going to do it. I I I'm not going to raise the blood pressure in, in the last minute of this video. Already almost 35 minutes long. Um, I'm not going to do it, man. It's just mind-boggling that you started this invasion angle so awesome a month ago 
And for the last month, it has been nothing but shit. Raw has done nothing but choke slam Daniel Bryan, which wasn't even Daniel Bryan. They turned the lights out. Daniel Bryan can't even take a bump. So we know it wasn't even a choke slam. And wait, what else? Nothing. One full month. But five days before, they're all going to get some balls. And they're going to go over to SmackDown. They, they turned something really cool into shit. I want to end this on a high note, though. AJ Styles, I already said uh, thank you to Jinder Mahal for the service that he did the last five months. Nobody else will give you credit. Everyone else hates you. But guess what? I don't. Thank you, Jinder Mahal. So if I'm going to say thank you to him, I'm going to say congratulations and thank you to AJ Styles for being the best wrestler in the world, for giving us your entertainment, your talent. Every time you go out there, AJ Styles holds back nothing. He makes every match he's in the match of the night. I fucking love watching AJ Styles. I just do. And uh, AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. A lot of guys are saying, BC, you must be pissed. Jinder Mahal, Brock Lesnar, your two favorites are not in there at Survivor Series. But guess what? I love watching AJ Styles as well. So it's not a consolation prize for me. I'm still going to enjoy AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar. I, I just know what's going to happen, unfortunately. Um, and that's why I'm saying, don't get your hopes up too high. Don't, don't, everyone's going around, oh, AJ Styles is 10 times better than Jinder. Yeah, on paper. But when Survivor Series goes off the air, you might be saying to yourself, Man, I wish that was gender, because that was a squash that should have never fucking happened. Because I promise you, they're trying to protect Brock Lesnar, because they need Roman Reigns to beat Brock. And Roman Reigns is their pride and joy. That's Vince McMahon's cuddle buddy. And for Roman Reigns to win that championship, it has to be against somebody who's so dominant, and they're going to build up like this massive beast. Who else? Brock Lesnar. So unfortunately, AJ Styles is going to be fed to Brock Lesnar. That's what I don't like, guys. At least if it was built up, you know they would give them the time and the creativity into this plot, this storyline. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We'll see. That's why they wrestle the matches. That's why they put on the events. We'll all be watching, man. Some of us with high expectations, some of us with low expectations, others with zero expectations. Maybe that's the way to watch WWE from now on. AJ Styles is your new champion. Jinder Mahal is out of Survivor Series. Styles is in. BC Amplified. We'll check you later.